Good morning again, everyone. Welcome to this second Sunday in Lent. Our service this morning is Daily Morning Prayer Right One, which can be found in the prayer book. And our lectionary, if you don't have a prayer book, you can go to bcponline.org, click on the Daily Office, and then click on Daily Morning Prayer Right One if you would like to follow along and do not have a prayer book. And our readings this morning can be found at lectionarypage.net. Again, the service this morning is Daily Morning Prayer Right One. Jesus said, whosoever will come after me, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks, to the, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him. Let us come before him in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts, confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Before the confession, if everybody could just remember to mute themselves, please. Staying together. Almighty, most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. You almighty and merciful Lord, grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Antiphon for this morning. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. O come, let us adore him. Let us say together the Venite. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth and with righteousness to judge the world and the peoples with his truth. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 22, verses 22 through 30. Psalm 22, verses 22 through 30. Let us say the psalm in unison. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All you of Jacob's line, give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them. But when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. 
All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone, all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship, and all who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Do we have somebody reading the first lesson from today? Yes, so Paul is reading. He needs to unmute himself. Um, Paul, yeah, you need I to got un- it. Oh, they- yeah, I did it. Yeah, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Okay. A reading from the book of Genesis. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless. And I will make my covenant between me and you and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations. I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come before you. I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to you, your offspring after you. God said to Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations, kings of people, or people shall come from her. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle of this morning is Canticle 14, the Song of Penitence, which can be found on page 90 of the Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 14. Let us say the canticle in unison. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering, and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal, sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 8, beginning at the 31st verse. Jesus began to teach his disciples that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, 
and after three days, rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Returning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I began my Ash Wednesday sermon quoting from an article written by my liturgic professor in seminary entitled, Must We Do Lent? Must We Do Lent This Year? In all the devastation of the last year, a pandemic that has caused so much suffering and death and which still has a tight grip on this world, the realities of racial inequality presented in such stark realism the national crisis we are facing in terms of the political divides in this country literally setting us at each other's throats. With all we have had to give up this year, all we have lost, all this bleakness and death, must we do Lent this year? My professor writes in his article, to begin from the view that Lent is about death, and about losing things is to begin in the wrong place. Lent is, in its roots and its core, a time to renew and deepen our commitment to our baptismal life. This article came out several weeks before Ash Wednesday, and in the light of our church's invitation given us that day to the observance of a holy Lent, through self-examination and repentance, prayer, fasting, and self-denial, reading and meditating on God's holy word. It has been on my mind ever since. Over the last several weeks, I realized prayer has not been at the heart of my Lenten observances over the last few years, which I made a conscious decision to change. In doing so, I realize those famous words Christ declares to us today. If anyone want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. As foundational to what this season of Lent calls us to, entering into a deeper relationship with Christ. And thereby offers us a time of rejuvenation and a renewal. Rather than looking at Lent with dread and fear as a long 40 days of bleakness and somberness, it can be for us a time of joy as it can help reground us in those core roots of our faith, leading us to both follow Christ and to finding Christ in both the joys and perils of our lives today. I feel these famous words of Christ exhorting us to take up our cross can have an enormous, can have an ominous tone to them, especially hearing them in Lent as the cross of Good Friday looms in the background of this season. We hear these words and perhaps our minds go to Jesus' walk to Golgotha, the site of his crucifixion. The heavy wood of the cross laid across his back. And according to conjecture and legend, J 
Jesus's battered body fell several times under its immense weight. And then that cross became the instrument of his harrowing death, his hands and feet nailed to it. It brings to our minds images of great hardship, great pain, great suffering. These same images most likely flooding the minds of the disciples and others as they heard Jesus give this teaching. When he spoke these words, crucifixion being a well-known form of Roman execution, people probably had an understanding of it, if not real life encounters with this hideous spectacle. Taking up our cross can seem a very unpleasant and daunting, perhaps a nearly impossible task. Perhaps even a task, a teaching, would rather just pushes her into Lent, the cross becomes more and more defined. Must we do Lent this year? Must we do Good Friday this year? Can't we simply find ourselves all of a sudden standing in front of the empty tomb? We all know the story. The answer is, yes, we could. Of course we could. However, if we do that, I fear we risk Easter becoming only a moment, an instance. Come the day after, Easter Monday, and we plunge right back into this world, into pandemic, into racial tensions, into political divisiveness and violence. And Easter can be lost in the clamor of all this everyday pain. Lent can keep this from occurring. This season invites us to set our hearts and minds on Jesus's suffering, his suffering in the wilderness, his suffering during Holy Week, and his victory in the wilderness, his victory over sin and death, his victory of life, which I feel makes for us Easter being more than a moment or instance, but a way for our lives, a way for our lives. We recently had our diocesan council retreats, and like so many aspects of our life, it was extremely different scaled back and virtual. A goal of the retreat is to help council members get to know each other a little better. This was still a focus this year, and we were asked to bring to the virtual retreat an object or a picture of something of significance in our life. I looked around my apartment, and the night before had narrowed it down to three things. A cross I picked up while on a mission trip in Nicaragua, cross I picked up while in the Holy Land, and the cross I wear around my neck. Perhaps you see a theme had developed. I decided upon the cross I wear around my neck as it bears the special significance that I picked it out with my father many, many, many years ago. I remember once hearing in a documentary a commentator saying, the cross could be viewed as a strange symbol for Christianity, as it was the means by which Jesus died. By the same token, it could also be viewed as, strange, as a strange symbol to wear around the neck or as cufflinks or earrings, as the cross was a form of execution. However, while we gaze on the cross and remember Christ's sacrifice and death, we also remember why he submitted to this death, to bring us forgiveness and to bring us life, to bring us salvation. The cross that stands for Christians as our central symbol, crosses we wear that adorn our altar and homes is not the cross of crucifixion, but the cross of resurrection. 
the cross in which we see the victory of life over death, the cross beaming with salvation's lights, the cross that Christ is enthroned on in kingly radiance, <clears throat> continuously inviting and drawing the whole world to himself. Whether an empty cross or crucifix, we are remembering the tremendous love of Christ for all of us. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. My friends, these words are invitation. I do not believe Christ is asking us to take up hardship, to take up pain, to take up suffering, or to somehow force these to become realities in our life. I believe what he is saying in take up the cross is to take up the faith, take up the gospel in this life. At times, it may cause us to experience hardship, pain, and even suffering. The good news is just that, good news. But sometimes hearing that good news, living that good news, is very difficult. I remember the words of our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, during his wonderful sermon at Trinity Institute a few years ago, where he said, as I get older, I am convinced more and more that Christianity is not complex, but it is hard to do. Being a disciple of Christ is difficult and at times may bring hardship, pain, and even suffering, but it will always bring grace into those times of life, into all times of life. This is what we find through entering into relationship with Christ, and this is Easter for our lives. My friends, let our Lenten disciplines our Lenten pilgrimage, our Lenten season, lead us to accepting Jesus' invitation today to take up the cross, the faith, the gospel in our lives, reminding us always of the grace it bestows, that Jesus died for us so that we would have life and have it in abundance. And we can live this life in the world today. Must we do Lent this year? Let us pray this year and every year. To God be glory, majesty, honor, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 691 in the hymnal. Hymn 691.
Her service continues on page 53 of the prayer book. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us say together, Suffragettes B. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name forever, world without end. Vouchsafe, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy be upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted. Let me never be confounded. The collect for the day. O God, whose glory it is always to have mercy, be gracious to all who have gone astray from thy ways, and bring them again with penitent hearts and steadfast faith to embrace and hold fast the unchangeable truth of thy word, Jesus Christ, thy Son, who with thee and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A collect for Sundays. O God, who make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A collect for grace. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same way with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we may fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that we, being ordered by thy governance, may do always what is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A call it for mission. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace. So clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee. For the honor of thy name. Amen. Prayers of the people this morning are according to form four beginning on page 388 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your love, your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all those, bless all those whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit and give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of St. James, <clears throat> for the Bennett family, Linda, Todd, Carol, Mose, Diana, Andrea, August, Sandy, Betty, Chris, Bill, Julie, Kimberly, Rip, Jacob, Larry, Anna, Hugh, Barbara, Victoria, Michael, Steve, Lucelle, Bill and Charlotte. You know their needs, dear Lord. We pray for those for whom our prayers have been asked of all saints. We pray for Lynn and Lottie, Josh and Courtney, and all our professors and teachers and students for Grove, Kristen, and Barbara, Herb, Karen, Kevin and Paula, Harry, Della, Anna, Leanne, Anne, Jubilee, Helen, Judy, Beverly, for Niana's friend, for Monica's husband, Juan, recovering from coronavirus, for our health workers, Melissa, Anne, Margie, and Zach, doing COVID nursing, for Lillian's daughter, Sarah, Beth and Becky, and for our elders, Christine, Sally Eames, John D, for Laurie's Aunt Laura, Nicholas's grandfather, and Betsy Knight. We pray for all those struggling with COVID-19, and for those mourning the deaths of family and friends, we pray for places where the COVID-19 virus is surging and overwhelming. We thank you for the administration of vaccines. We pray for patients as we wait to be vaccinated. We pray for us all that we will continue practice mask wearing, social distancing, and limiting gatherings inside to stop the surge of the virus and to reduce the death rate. We pray for the people of Texas, Oklahoma and Louisiana. We pray for the restoration of electricity and an ample supply of drinking water. We pray, O oh Lord, for the healing of the divisions in our country. Guide us all and our governments in the way of justice and mercy and truth and restore health and peace to our divided country in a new affirmation of each American's worth and the need for restorative justice based on repentance and reconciliation. We pray for the survivors and those mourning and remembering those killed at the Axum massacre in the Tigray region, Ethiopia, during the Tigray war in November, 2020. We give thanks for our faith communities that we are able to come together in worship. We give thanks for all faith communities and for our silence, uh, for our diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in, the, in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the repose of the soul of Monica's uncle, Daniel, and Carlos Viega. We pray for the repose of the soul of Robert Towers, the father of Jeff Towers. We pray for the repose of the soul of Lulu, beloved pet of the Bennett family. We also pray for the repose of the soul of Shirley, 
mother of David Minot. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Peace to the Lord be always with you. Peace, Peace to And also with you. Yeah. Yep. Peace. Peace. Peace, Peace everyone. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Peace. So just a couple of announcements. Um, after this service, we will be moving into the annual meeting for all saints, a um, separate Zoom link was sent out for that so you'll have to um this zoom link will be closed after the service and then if you um receive that email you just click on the link and that will bring you into the next um meeting if you did not um receive that link uh let julian know and she can send you a uh, or let me know we can forward the link to you next sunday um our service will return to 10 in the morning and that will continue going forward for the foreseeable future uh, coffee hour will not be at nine anymore, however. What we will be doing for the next three weeks is the service will be at 10. Then after that service, we'll have um, coffee hour for about a half hour or so. And then we'll move into a Lenten forum for three weeks. And the Lenten forum this year will um, cover the Nicene Creed, which we say, well, which we used to say almost every Sunday in our usual Eucharist services, and which we say when we um, pray the liturgy of the word. When we do morning prayer, though, we say the Apostles' Creed. So we'll be looking at the Nicene Creed over the next three weeks and how that um, came to be um, developed, um, how it is the statement of our faith, and how it um, evolved over um, the course of the fourth century. So if you are interested in that, um, we invite you to come to those Lenten forums. It will be on the same link. Um, the service will end, coffee hour will begin, and then the forum will begin. So you just stay in the link. And you don't have to attend every, every forum to um, understand what's going on in the subsequent forums. So we hope that everybody will come to that. Our service will continue on page 58 with the general thanksgiving. Saying together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving of ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and as promised through thy well-beloved Son, that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory. Glory to God. To God, who's the church, or 707 in the book.